Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so as was noted, I have made more than a few career changes in time uh, and have uh, learned not only a lot of things out of that, but this topic, navigating career change and professional growth, has sort of become near and dear to me um, through a lot of lessons learned, good and instructive. Um, and so as that, I hope that part of this can be a really good two-way conversation uh, throughout the session. Um, so first up, I believe we're going to start with two questions, because again, interactive, right? Uh, and uh, somebody will tell me when we're ready on the screen with the questions. We're ready? There we go. All right. How many of you are considering a move somewhere in the next three years? Oh, pretty good. Okay. Next one uh, that goes with it. When you're considering your move, are you looking within your current organization? Oh. <laughs> Moving to another organization within the same department or company? Only a few. OK. Or moving to another department or company, including government to private and private to government? OK, that was a lot less total hands. <laughs> okay, so I will tell you, uh, I, over the years, through a lot of different moves, came up with a couple different criteria by which I assess. So every couple years, regardless of sort of how life is going, you know, sort of any moment in time, I sort of look around and say to myself, do I enjoy what I'm working on? Do I feel like I'm making a difference? Do I feel like I'm positioned effectively to make a difference? Do I like the people I'm working with and feel like I'm part of a team? And am I still learning and growing? And if the answer isn't true to all three, take a minute. I go activate my network. I go talk to a bunch of people, see what's out there. You can still stay where you are. And there were a bunch of times I did that, and I ended up staying for a little bit longer. But through that process, you learn a lot about yourself. And I would encourage you to think of your own criteria and how you would assess when and how you look. All right, the next. Thing. For those of you who answered yes to moving, and this is just a quick, quick answer type of thing, so we don't, we don't have to do the microphone, so just if people can just yell out an answer and I'll do my best to capture it. Um, for those of you who answered yes to moving, what matters most to you in your decision to move? <coughs> Professional training. Okay, yes. Enjoy, Enjoy what you're doing. I love that. Yes. Somebody over here said something. Yes, discussion with you with your network. Other thoughts? Being part of the team. Some of the with, with mentoring, but like getting that next generation and the work flows within that. Yep. I love it. Building back in. Uh, the interesting thing that none of people said that usually I hear quite a bit of is risk of change. Do I understand the risk I am taking? I often am quite struck about how they think about risk. And I often say, um, this is particularly true if you're switching organizations, right? Like, I switched a lot of jobs within the Department of Homeland Security over the 20 years I was there. Not quite 20. <laughs> a lot of years I was there. But I was still in DHS, right? I still had a government paycheck. So my risk there, different than when I left government and went to private sector, where I didn't have automatically that same safety net. But I would say, um, uh, and this was my lesson learned, the first couple moves were the hardest. You're leaving your safety net. You're leaving what you know. Even if you're frustrated or ready for a change, it's still that risk of a little bit of the unknown. And will this work out? Did I just get bamboozled by somebody talking a good game? <laughs> or is this really the opportunity I think it is? And those are not wrong questions, right? You should think those through. But I would also say, once you've made a couple of the changes, you learn something from each one, and each one after that becomes easier because you sort of know yourself. I had one job, one switch I did. I won't say which one, but I literally said this is probably the hardest transition I'm ever going to make from a culture transition. I'm going to make a deal with myself. I will stay there for one year, tough it out no matter what. And if at the one year they go, thanks, Patty, too much change, or I go, wow, just talking past each other. It's OK. I'm employable. I can move. I ended up staying there for four years. So it's like give yourself permission to also be wrong in that conversation, right? It's OK if everything isn't perfect. All right, next question. As you think about your career progression, have you sought out mentor and mentoring? Some. More. There you go. Good. 
uh, professional training, particularly a degree or a certification? That's excellent. Good. Uh, developmental assignments? Yes. Okay. So I, w I would like to say there's no wrong answers here. Some of it is about how you learn yourself, like the way that it speaks to you. There's a lot of fantastic uh, um, research out there that talks about the different ways people learn and the best environments there. Some people are all about the formal study and data, and you'd think as someone who, who went to law school, that would be me. I came out of that and said, I'm never going back to school ever again <laughs> if I don't have to. Um, the second one is a, a lot I hear, and it goes with the mentor mentoring, is that trusted people, the people who tell you the really cool stories that have stuck with them because that was the lesson learned. I have a lot of that. I have bosses that I remember their stories they told me 20 plus years ago. And I still use them, probably to the unhappiness of some of the people I talk to. And then the third one is that learn by doing. I will say that is my number one. Um, I am a big believer in go out, see it, try it, do it. Something uh, that I think has stood me in really good stead. Of you who answered to one of these, was there a time that you were like, I think this is going to be the best thing, and it completely didn't work out? Yes. Anybody want to volunteer? Just a quick snippet. What, what didn't work? Don't have to give me the context. Just say a mismatch in, in skill set, or mismatch in understanding of needs, or a certification that didn't actually result in me getting hired. <laughs> yes. Culture, my personal favorite. <laughs> Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yes. Other thoughts people have? Nobody wants to volunteer. People. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it just doesn't, it's not the right fit. Yes. Okay. This translates nicely into the next section we have, which is about networks, our last question. Today and going into the session at the end here is all about building your network, continuing to grow it, Think about how that can be something that helps encourage you, build your interests. As you have considered the makeup of your network today, which of the following do you have represented? You can say yes to as many of these as you want. Uh, mentors or, and or mentees. Excellent. That's almost 100%. I'm really impressed. Good job. Uh, colleagues within your own organization who consider truly part of your network. Okay. Um, colleagues out in outside your organization, but within the same field. So law enforcement or, or congressional, yeah. Good, okay. What about colleagues outside your organization in an entirely different field? I am really impressed. That is more than a third. Good job. <laughs> I will say, um, uh, those. Uh, quick question for you. Those of you who, who said yes to those outside your field, was it a happy accident you found them? Or did you have an intentional process? College or graduate, fantastic. You kept it, you kept in touch. Yes, others. Yeah. Previous employment. Yeah. That's a great one. Those of you who did a uh, 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 certification or degree fields, anybody there that you've kept up with that you know even when you did it uh, as an adult that has that really different field and background. Great. So I think part of the theme of today really is that sort of uh, getting that wide array, um, that diversity of thought around you. Why is this important? Um, I would encourage everybody to think about the network that you have both inside, who will understand the shorthand you speak without any translation. That will say, oh yeah, you're right. Luke takes up all the time on the agenda. <laughs> Whatever it is that that you know, they know immediately, they're right there with you, they understand we need to defend in that moment. But the other half of it is looking at how do you get different ways of looking at things, including for yourself. When you're thinking about your career job, your changes, where you wanna go, I am continually struck by, you know, we know ourselves based on the path we're on and the place we grew up. You need somebody else to say, this is how I see you, this is how I see your skills, this is how I think it would translate here, or my personal favorite, those words you're using don't mean what you think they mean. <laughs> Everybody's had that moment, right? <laughs> I recently had a, a current law enforcement officer ask me to look at his resume, and he had it, all these things about risk, risk management. 
And I'm like, so do you have a certification? He's like, no. I'm like, yeah, that's not what risk management means. Right. Like, words mean different things depending where you are. And having those people who mirror back to you from a very different context can completely change how you think about yourself. When I first started uh, talking to people about potentially leaving government into the private sector, the number one thing I said is, I only know the things I've seen and been exposed to. Please tell me what else I should be thinking of and who I should be talking to. And I will talk to anybody, even if I don't think I want that job. <laughs> and I had these fun conversations where I went and talked to somebody and I came out and went, nope. Like, and that's okay, right? Like the point is to help change your mindset and your thinking to build out that opportunity space. All right. Before we do the break, I do want to just briefly, since I've been trying to make this intera as much interactive as possible, open it up to you all. What are the things you're thinking about that we haven't covered, or even if we had, but you want to dive into more, on that I'm thinking about what a change might look like in three years? And now we'll actually do the microphone. Yes, please. Hi. So when talking about changes, I'm curious from your experience of, like you mentioned, going into conversations and walking away being like, no, not absolutely not. So what's a green flag you have and what's a red flag you have when considering a new <laughs> opportunity? Yeah. Um, so anybody who offers me a job that's substantially similar to what I already did, I understand why they want me. I don't understand why, they, why I want them. Right. So um, if because I basically say if it's essentially the same job I already have, then why would I leave? I just stay here. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, and everybody has their own sort of radar of what matters in this space. But in particular, I will just say people going from government to private sector. I often find people um, they get approached by someone they know. And they only talk to one person. Right. And so maybe they get a glossy title or the money sounds really good and they they stop there because like it's like well I know Sue right so I'll be okay and the answer is it often isn't right so you shouldn't you should take a minute research think about it understand what it is not just jump um, but the last piece I'll say in in that space uh, the, the absolute most red flag <laughs> is uh, <laughs> um, people who, when you say, so really excited about new organization X, can you tell me what the career after this job looks like is? And they can't answer the question. Other questions people have? Nancy. And, and, uh, uh, mi microphone coming. <laughs> I'm Nancy Stewart, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, I wanted to just sort of make a statement. I think that with government women, that you really need to be involved with the political women as well as the people that are in the career positions. The political women can be very, very helpful to you, <laughs> and they can really make a difference. And there seems to be an issue here. I'm not talking just in this group, but with with government women on the career side and political women. And this is really, really important. Just to tell you, I was chairman of Consumer Product Safety Commission, and one of my major issues was, where are the women <laughs> involved in this agency? All the guys were heads of the agencies, and I thought, I, I took that on as a priority to make them understand that we were going to have diversity <laughs> and that their their careers would have a difference if they didn't get involved. So I think that now you're going into a political time that you can really use a lot of these political people, whether they be Republicans that win or whether they be Democrats that win, and go after those jobs because they're fabulous. And that way, I think it's a great opportunity yeah. for a lot more. Uh, opportunities for everybody. I, I just want to double down on that. I will say some of the best experiences I actually got were during presidential transitions. Um, in particular, there's this window, right, where people are not in their new seats. Um, for sake of my microphone coming. <laughs> They're not, the new people are not yet in this, their seats, right? And so there's uh, a lot of opportunities to act in a very different role than you're in at that moment. Um, 
and the exposure to different ways of thinking about problem sets or issues, uh, the opportunity to get to meet new leadership through that mechanism and be part of the solution as they try to translate their vision. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I don't know, I'll, I'll say several of my rotations were sort of because of those moments in time. And I have to say, even, even though I stayed career my whole time, those were incredibly valuable, I thought, in terms of um, my growth and development. So I second that completely. Um, one more, I think we've got time for. No, but I thought I saw somebody. I lied. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Rachel Winkler. Um, I'm an attorney with Nixon Peabody on their cross border risks practice group. Um, we were at DHS at the same time, um, uh, although you were there longer. I'd love to know how you, you know, how you secured the large majority of your positions, mm -hmm. um, including when you decided to make changes. Did you go after those jobs? Did people come to you trying to get you to come over? Um, and how did you develop the relationships yeah. uh, to make the determination to go yeah. when, you, when you went? Fantastic question, and especially because, you know, in, in government, um, even when somebody says, I'd like you to apply, then that could go a lot of different ways, right? <laughs> um, I will say I worked pretty hard after, there's a certain point in that I found in the government career where, you know, it goes pretty easily. They just touch you on the shoulder and say, like, go that way, right? But after a certain point, it's on you to direct your career, and you need to be intentional and thoughtful. And then you need to communicate with people what you want and where you want it. And sometimes they don't have anything at that moment in time, but they will remember you six months later or a year later, or they'll hear through a friend that something else is open, and they go, hey, I don't know if you were tracking, but so-and-so is about to post a job. And I know it usually goes only to pick your favorite, <laughs> law enforcement, military, wh whatever it is, but this time they want somebody different who has your background of X. You should apply. Um, that was really opening, right? So it, similarly, I had times where I was interested in a job and I sort of got the, yes, but you've been out of that area for a really long time. Um, so for example, when I completed my tenure at the National Security Council, which I have to say was one of the most ex amazing experiences you can ever have, and if everyone ever gets the opportunity to go serve at the NSC, please say yes. <laughs> you get to see the up close and personal sausage making you will not see anywhere else. But I came back, and someone very nicely said to me as I was applying for certain types of jobs, you know, basically you've been doing policy and strategy for the last seven years. You haven't led a large number of people or a large budget in quite a while. And I'm like, ah, yes, you are correct. So I fixed that. <laughs> I went and got somebody who was interested in, uh, you know, letting me do something different, got that credential back, it opened up the next door. So back to that point of sort of a, um, I was already SES, so I didn't have to worry about pay grade uh, issues like Beth did, but, you know, people were looking at me like, your title is reduced from where you were. I said, yeah, but I got to do something completely different and change my resume substantially that opened up new doors. And I had a lot of fun in that project. Awesome. All right, with that, I am the only thing stopping you between drinks and networking. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for being with us today. And Megan is coming back to say goodbye to all of us. Okay.